Good morning, everyone. It is my final consecutive streaming day of the week. And it's a good day, let me tell you, because number one, we got a nice packed podcast full of updates, gaming news, and more. But then it is time for the conclusion of the Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC after several weeks of playing it. Today, we take on the final boss and seem to wrap it up. See how long it takes, right? So it's going to be a great day. I cannot wait. All this and more on today's show. As you can see, we have a special guest that was very eager to make his on-camera appearance for the show today. Welcome back, Jasper Kitty, everyone. Jasper Boy wanted to show up and say hello to everyone. So I told you guys that basically in the last several weeks to months, actually, um, you know, behind the scenes, my, my family and I have had some stuff going on, you know, various different things, personal things of various different things that have been messing with my schedule and the like. So it's been unclear when Jasper could or could not come on stream. In fact, he could have come on stream last week, but it was a Street Fighter day. So I had the door closed, and then people were like, where's Jasper? I was like, well, if you guys really want, I'll open the door. So I opened it, and he jumped on the chair during a ranked match, distracting me, and I lost because of it. <laughs> so I had to get him out of the office. So as you can see, yeah, things have been kind of all over the place. Recently, um, we are hoping that the schedule will more solidify within the next couple of weeks. Like right now, tomorrow is my day off Wednesday and no exaggeration. Again, it's just a crazy day. I got to be up at like six in the morning tomorrow. That's my day off. I have to be up at six in the morning to run around and do errands and, and, and appointments and seeing doctors and all kinds of shit tomorrow. Um, so that's what I mean. It's chaotic, but I'm hoping that within the next couple of weeks, things will be better and be more solidified and steady again. And then I could, tell you guys exactly what days you know i'll have off if and when jasper can be on stream etc you know i know it's been very very sporadic the last couple of weeks okay so anyway welcome jasper to the show he'll probably be on my lap for this show because now he's been waiting to be in here for for a while um anyway i hope you're all doing well and i welcome you to the level one podcast for tuesday the 16th of july 2024 it is my final consecutive streaming day of the week meaning I am off from streaming tomorrow. Um, it has been a heck of a week. It has been a heck of a streaming week, right? <clears throat> um, great progress and strides in Street Fighter VI with M. Bison. Uh, now at the end of the Ur uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC in Elden Ring. Um, actually made great progress in Riven, and we're actually close to the end of that. And of course, nice chill streams of Stardew Valley. Um, have all been awesome this week. It really has been a great streaming week. Um, and now we've been talking about, you know, what's next. And what's next is we're going to check out that Kamitsugami Path of the Goddess game on Friday and see if it's any good. If it's not, then we'll probably bring something else back to the mix. Uh, this Saturday is the return of Fallout 4, which we haven't played in over a month now, but we need to finish up with the uh, Nuka-Cola DLC. So we've got a lot going on right now, you know, with, with uh, summertime fun and gameplay and everything. I'm excited for what's to come. I hope you guys are too. Um... <clears throat> So, shall I partake in a little recap of yesterday, of what happened? Because I thought yesterday was a pretty darn good streaming day. Um, so, yesterday's podcast, we basically determined the few things that have been determined, meaning the return of Fallout 4, the Kamitsugami thing. Uh, we're even starting to solidify things we're going to be doing in a little under two weeks during the Digital Summer Party Marathon that I'm going to be doing. By the way, if you're wondering why this door is on camera, it's because the air conditioner is blasting and the door is open because Jasper's in here. But I can't like half close it because the wind from the air conditioner just blows it back open anyway. So it's going to be on camera for the podcast. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> it's just not stoppable. There, here it comes. It's just not stoppable unless I had a door stop, which I think I do have a door stop somewhere around the house, but I don't know where. It's not a big deal. Oh, actually, there's a door stop right over there I'm seeing. And it's not a big deal. Who cares? You can see a little bit of the door, right? Who gives a crap? All right, so... um. <clears throat> So what's going on? Well, yesterday, after a fun, chill podcast, 
featuring some game news and the like, I jumped into Street Fighter VI, okay? And FYI, yesterday was the best session of Street Fighter VI that I have had since I started playing exclusively master matches with M. Bison. So I'm happy to report an actual positive day of wins and losses, which hasn't, you know, happened in a while. The last couple of sessions with M. Bison that I did, actually, I lost more than I won, but mostly it was because I just kept losing to, to stupid cami pattern play. Um, basically, yesterday, I instituted the same thing I did when I was trying to climb to master. If I'm fighting a cami and I play against a cami, and literally it's a pattern play cami, which is exactly the same thing, and half my inputs don't come out to get around her shit, I'm quitting after one game. I'm not throwing away master points because the game favors easy mode gameplay from scrubs and doesn't give me my inputs. And that actually has worked. Um, instead of pissing away points, I just lose one, I move on to the next match, and then usually I win the next match, so then I don't end up losing a whole ton of ranking points. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yesterday, first of all, I will say this, we had some difficulty, of all things, with casual matches. And I think the reason I'm having a problem with casual matches is because Capcom fucked it up. What do I mean by that? Well, when you play a fighting game online, there's two ways to play. Casual matches and ranked. Casual matches are just supposed to be, hey, you have an option to play a single match or more. <clears throat> there's nothing at stake. There's no ranking points or anything. And it's just supposed to be against anyone who's available, right? And you actually have criteria you can set up while you want better connections or whatever. But it's just supposed to be against anyone. That's the whole point of casuals. Like, if you go to casual play at an event, you could be playing someone who's awful, you could be playing someone who's good, or someone who's a tournament pro, but it doesn't matter. That's the whole idea of casuals. You get experience against various people of different levels, and that's that's why it should work. But what Capcom has done... Jasper, you are so not going to chew... Jasper, stop that. You're not going to chew my new joystick wire. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, you're not. Leave it alone. Okay. Um, no, what they have done is they made it so that... Jasper, don't even... Start. That's it. Already you're starting. He's been in here for not even five minutes. Stop with the wires right now. Leave them alone. Leave all the wires alone. Start chewing. I'm going to start yelling and spraying. That's it. You're in big trouble. <laughs> You're in big trouble, mister. Don't bite that wire. I'm telling you right now. Hey! Stop! Okay. So you're going to have a lot of interruptions on the podcast today, as you can tell. Um, no, so what Capcom did is they screwed it up. They made it so that when you do casual play, it literally match makes with people of equal level if it can. And if it can't, then it'll throw you into like a random match. But it actually tries... Jasper, stop it. It actually tries to match make you with people of equal level, which makes no sense. That would be the equivalent of going to a tournament and saying, I want to do some casual matches. And there's stations set up. Well, if you're a really good pro player, you can play casual matches on, the, on that station. If you're kind of good, but you're not great, do casual matches on the central station. And if you know you suck, go play casual matches over there on the left. That, that doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't happen at all. It's not supposed to be like that. That undermines the entire point of casual play, where everyone's supposed to have an equal opportunity to play. In reality, you know what it's supposed to be like? An arcade cabinet. Like, back in the day, being in an arcade, and the best player is playing on the arcade cabinet, and everyone steps up and puts their quarter up to challenge that person. And if they beat them, now they're the new king of the castle, and other people then come out to try to fight them. But that's what it's supposed to be like in casual play, simulating an arcade experience. They've screwed it up in Street Fighter VI. You should not have any skill levels measured whatsoever in casual play. It's dumb that they did it that way. Because now, here I am in casual play just trying to find some matches. The only purpose... Jasper, I'm not going to say it again. I'm going to spray. Stop. Jasper, stop. Geez, he will not let up today. He tried to buy every wire on the floor, and there's like 10 of them. Okay. Now, as I was saying... The entire point of casual play for me, I just want to warm up. I'm just trying to get into my game, get a little bit of muscle memory back, get the rust off, right? Get the dust off the cobwebs so that I can jump to ranked and I'm playing a little better. I just want to get a couple quick matches in. And 
me trying to play casual play in Street Fighter 6, it's not working. It's like, I sit there and I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait. Then it gives me a match. Oh, the match cancels. And I wait, and I wait, and I wait. And then finally I'll get a match, and it's hit or miss if the match is good or not. Sometimes it will be a good match. Like, I actually played a couple Hondas, which is good. I want variety. So playing Honda is a great thing. I've barely played any Hondas with uh, M. Bison. I'm trying to learn the matchup. And in fact, I found out Honda's neutral jumping fierce punch is incredibly good against uh, Bison. So I need to figure out a way around it now. <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah, it's just like, so then I get one match. Okay, great. Time for another match. Wait, wait, wait. Tries to join, cancel. Wait, wait. Tries to join, cancel. Wait. Wait, and then wireless match. And I'll just accept it. And people are like, why are you accepting wireless matches? Because I don't want to sit here waiting for 12 minutes. It's taking so long to get a casual match at this point. You know, and I tried limited, extended, and worldwide, you know, scope. And it, it's still doing it. So what that tells me is that, sadly, Capcom fucked up casual play in Street Fighter Six. They made it so that it always is looking for skill level, which it never should in casual. And because of that, it's making it almost impossible to find matches at certain times of day or certain you know players of that of your level aren't available. I mean, my, my Bison's now 1,560-something rank points. I'll talk about it in a second. It's going to be hard to find people in casual play playing at that level. There's not that many. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they, they definitely screwed it up. So, after a, over an hour of just trying to play casual play to warm up, I still didn't feel warmed up. I was like, this sucks that I've been playing, but I mean, realistically, how many people did I just get to play? And honestly, half the matches weren't even that good. There was definitely issues with dropped inputs and the like. So I'm like, man, I just, I don't feel like I had the opportunity to really practice, but what am I going to do? Have my streams over, right? So then I jumped into ranked and I will say this again, I did pretty darn good. Most matchups I won two out of three, although I did lose that middle match quite a bit. Um, Some of the matchups were against higher ranked people. And even if I went, one and two, at least it kind of broke even, so I didn't lose points in those cases. Um, so overall, F FYI, when I started playing ranked yesterday, I had 22 wins and 15 losses for a 59% win-loss ratio. That's a good ratio. And I ended up, I had my most points ever. I think it was 1,583 master rank points. But then, you know, I lost and won again. I, I ended the stream at 1,562 points. So that's the highest I've ever ended a stream at. And let me tell you something. I listened. I listened to feedback. I got a piece of feedback that was very, very useful. Okay. Someone had said to me over the last week, they said, Phil, I've noticed a big pattern when you're playing Street Fighter VI. When you get to the end of your stream, right? You always say, oh, it's last match. But then after that, you say, oh, you just want to squeeze in one more match. And almost every single time you've said that, you end up losing the final match and then you lose points right at the last minute and it drops your score. Likely, that's because you're already exhausted and you're just trying to squeeze in a final win, but you're not going to play as well in those situations. So just don't do it, right? If, if you have this final match mentality, don't do it. If you're at the end of your stream, end it. If you actually do have time for a final match, like you have like five more minutes, then do it. But if you really truly are at the end of your stream, don't extend the stream to do another set. It's just not going to pan out. So yesterday, no exaggeration, it had just hit 4 p.m. And I'm like, dude, I'm craving another set right now. Let's do it. And then it resonated in my head. It was like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. I was like, I'm going to go ahead and no, we're not going to do it. So I ended at 1562 and I didn't blow it and dump a bunch of points. Because if I had lost two there, I might have lost another 20 points and gone back down to 1540, which was actually my previous rank was 1541. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it definitely could have ended up poorly for me. So now what I'm hoping is that each time that I play, we gain a few points. It doesn't have to be a ton, but I just want to gain a few points each set. You see, that's my goal. So let's hope that maybe next time I play, maybe I'll be 1570. The next time I play 1580. And within a week or two, we can get over 1600 because I feel like there's going to be a threshold and once we hit a certain amount of rank points, I'm just going to play better players from now on. I need to get past the army of cami scrubs. Because that's really the problem. It's just an army of endless pattern play cami scrubs. And sadly, pattern play with cami can work because it's literally a guessing game to get out 
unless you have a reversal. So if you're a top tier character with an invincible reversal, you can get out of Cammy's bullshit and it's easy. But anyone else who doesn't have a true reversal, you get stuck in the corner, 50-50 mix up, game over if you guess wrong. And that's the problem. It's, it's just luck. It's not skill. It's literal luck to anyone who can do it. So for me, I need to get out of that range so I'm not facing this army of crappy camis so that I can actually get to good gameplay, okay? So it went well yesterday in Street Fighter Six. I was pleased that I actually uh, had a winning record in ranked and I actually gained rank points. And next time around on Thursday, we resume, okay? Uh, last night in Stardew Valley, uh, basically we started fall and everything reset again. So all new crops, new events, new focuses, right? I had to basically buy a whole bunch of new seeds. I set up sprinklers. So now I barely need to water any crops, which is excellent. I'm really having a good time, uh, you know, now better with spatial awareness of how to do things like the farm. I got the the uh, the, the coop going with the chickens, and that's pretty self-sufficient at this point. Um, basically, everything's going well in that regard. But now what's happening is, Stardew Valley is becoming so complex with so much going on all at a time that it's getting hard to micromanage and remember it all because I don't play the game every day, right? So, for example, as soon as you wake up, you're supposed to watch the TV for the weather report and your luck status, and if there's anything special going on, like a new recipe or something. Then you got to go water your crops, you got to harvest your mushrooms, you got to dry your mushrooms, you got to pet your cat, you got to feed your cat with or uh, fill your cat's water bowl. Then you got to go to the, the, the coop. You got to make sure the chickens are fed and touch each of them so that the affinity goes up. Then you got to gather their eggs. You got to make mayonnaise. You got to put the eggs away. Then you got to go check on your crab pots. You got to see if you have any junk in your crab pots and put that into your recycler. That's the things you just have to do before you even start with anything you want to do during the day. Then the question, what do I want to do today? Do I want to go fishing? Do I want to go into the cave and do some mining and kill some, some monsters and try to go down cave levels? Do I want to do some miscellaneous quests for the people in town? Um, you know what I mean? Like, and that's just a few things. And that's like every single day in Stardew Valley is like that. So here's the thing. When I started playing Stardew Valley 20 hours ago, it was more like, okay, I'm just going to relax with the audience. We'll talk. We'll have some conversation. We'll hang out while I play. And a lot of people gave me good advice said, pause the game if you're going to talk because time keeps progressing. So... I, you know, I'm learning those ins and outs of what it is or whatever, right? <clears throat> and then what happened is now the game's gotten so complex, it's actually getting harder to interact with my audience. Like, my audience wants to come and chill and talk with me, and they're all tagging me in chat, and I'm like, I can't really pay attention because, look, I have to do 17 micromanaging things first as time is progressing before the whole day passes, you know? So what I think I'm going to start doing, all right, when I play Stardew, I think after each task that I do during a day... I think what I'm going to do is like turn back to the audience and then talk for a little bit by pausing and then go back. So what I'll do like, okay, you wake up a new day, check the TV, go water the crops, do the eggs, all that. Then pause the game for like five minutes and just turn to the audience and talk to you guys and see what you're talking about. Maybe some people have good advice for the game. Maybe some people just want to talk, shoot the shit, you know, whatever it is. I think that's what we're going to do because otherwise me trying to juggle them both at the same time, it, it's not working. It's too much to do. And then what ends up happening is someone will be like, Oh, well, did you do this today? Oh, no, I totally forgot about it. I forgot it was even in the game. Shit, I was supposed to do that today, right? Yeah, now the day's over, so now you got to try to do it tomorrow. Oh, wait, tomorrow it's raining. You got to fish, so now that's off. You can't do that. And the next thing you know, 10 things have happened, and you've already forgotten everything you were trying to do. Like right now, I couldn't even tell you what our goal is in Stardew Valley. I can't remember. Are we saving up for something? Like are we saving money to buy something? Or are we trying to do a barn so that we can get livestock like and make milk? Or am I trying to buy the fishing pole, the better one that you could use the spinner on? Or I can't even remember. I literally can't remember what we're doing. And that's what I mean. Like, I feel like my brain gets scrambled playing the game now. <laughs> so. Good stuff there. It was a good stream, a fun stream. But it was definitely a confusing stream. Okay? Now, I'll just say one thing. Yesterday, for some reason, support on the Street Fighter stream was not very good. We didn't even hit the Tier 1 tip skull. There was almost no Super Chats or memberships. It was like almost a dead stream for support. I don't know why. It was actually a really good stream. If you look at the gameplay, I was actually doing much better. My combos were getting better. I was actually doing better hit confirms and drive rushes. 
And like I said, I actually won more than I lost. So I don't actually know what happened there. It could just be a one-off. And if that's the case, it's not concerning. It will be concerning if I continue to play Street Fighter VI and get better with Bison, but then support goes away, then I can't play it as much. And the downfall of that is the only reason I'm getting better with Bison and I'm getting higher master rank is because I'm playing two, three times a week. If I reduce it down to two times a week, one time a week, I'm done. I'll never be able to hang at the level I'm playing. I'll be just losing constantly. So I guess we have to figure out what happened. And like I said, hopefully on Thursday, when I do another major stream, it won't be that. It'll be the opposite. But I guess we'll have to see what happens on Thursday and continue on there. Okay? All right. So yesterday was a great streaming day in my opinion i had a great time with it and it was a good balance you know the stress of street fighter but then you balance that with stardew valley which is more chill and interactive um it was good i had a good time with it okay so now today it's time finally folks yes after over two weeks almost three weeks i'm trying to remember when it actually originally came out but today is the conclusion of the elden ring shadow of the Erd Tree dlc uh i can't remember exactly the date when we started playing it when it released it was a friday right so i think it's almost three weeks i think this friday would be three weeks so we're about 40 hours in just under 40 hours in and we're at the end we're at the final boss there's literally only one thing i didn't do in the dlc well okay there's two i didn't fight the stupid death birds why because the death birds are so boring and repetitive and we've already fought 100 of them in the main game so i didn't see a reason to do the death bird stuff uh, again a second time like why would i want to fight the same repetitive death birds just like why do i want to fight the same repetitive dragon drake things but they were all over the map so i just took them out when i could that's the one thing we didn't do the other thing is that there's that optional giant dragon senenasak axe or whatever his name is and it's just a tedious and annoying boss fight because he's in lightning so he just does insane damage for no reason it's not even that the boss is tough it's that there's you know environmental damage that takes your entire life bar down so there's two optional things we could decide to do if we so choose. We don't have to. Um, but anyway, um, in regards to uh, Elden Ring, we're done. We're on the final boss. And we actually have fought him for about roughly a half hour. I already know kind of his first phase pattern. It's just about me timed blocking properly and getting the correct counterattacks without getting hit after. I get the feeling I could pretty much master the first phase. The second phase, I've only seen a few times. But honestly, it doesn't seem that tough. The tougher part about the second phase is that he has a grab attack. And if he grabs you twice, it's instant death. So I have to basically learn how to dodge that grab so he doesn't grab me. But outside of that, I bet I could probably learn the second phase, you know, within a, a, a bit. I think today we might do it. I don't know. I'm not guaranteeing that because, quite frankly, whenever I say something, oh, I think I'll take care of it. And then, I, then it's like a joke and I, you know, I, I suck and I won't do it. So the thing is, I am in no rush to finish Shadow of the Erd Tree, right? I'm not. I don't have to finish it today. There's no, oh, impending stuff coming up that we have to finish it. If we need to keep playing it, we can. But with a three-hour stream, yeah, I'm going to lean towards the fact that I'm probably going to beat it today. Maybe, you know, maybe not, but probably. Um, and if we end early, it's up to you guys what you want. Like, do you want me to go back and try to fight the Death Birds? Do you want me to go back and fight that Dragon Boss? Or do you want me to go back to the main game and beat uh beat the final boss of the main game which i didn't beat remember i had gotten to him but then we ran out of time and then i never went back to fight him again so do you want me to beat him <clears throat> we could do that using the new builds that i got from the dlc see how easy or hard it is trying the new builds from the dlc against the true final boss right so we have some options but again it all depends if i actually beat the final boss of the elden ring dlc today or not it's going to be pretty epic you know there'll be probably some rage it'll be pretty fun well, I'll be honest, I think it's more anticlimactic because this entire DLC has not been nearly as difficult as people made it out to be. You know, everyone's saying, oh my god, the game is so hard. Nothing about this DLC has been hard. I'm just being honest. It's been challenging, but none of it's been like, oh my god, you really crushed me difficult. I haven't needed to summon to beat any boss. There was a few I summoned because it was part of the story, but I haven't required a summon to beat anyone. Um, it's It's all been pretty fair, I feel. Like, the most unfair part is the 4v1 fight, but you're supposed to summon for it. Like, that's the whole point of the fight. Um, <clears throat> what? Ellipsian says, you can also use Torrent against the final boss now? Why? Why did they do that? They added the ability to use Torrent during the final boss? 
That's weird. That's a weird addition. Hmm. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, I don't feel like anything in Shadow of the Earth Tree has been too particularly challenging. Just being honest. Like, have I been stuck on anything? There hasn't been a single boss that's taken me more than, say, 20, 30 minutes to beat. Probably the final boss will be the one that will take me the longest. But, you know, uh, it's because I played it in a way that I feel like they designed it. They want you to explore, find new weapons, respect to use them. Look and find the Skidoo Tree pieces. Level up with the Skidoo Tree fragment upgrades, right? Don't ignore game mechanics. Actually, use the game mechanics presented to you. Why else are they in there, right? So, I don't think it's been a big deal, quite honestly. Um, I guess we'll see how it goes uh, today. Maybe I'll beat it. Maybe I won't. Again, if I don't, if he actually whoops my butt, maybe there's a super final ultimate attack that I'm not aware of. That I, I won't get past, and so therefore it's going to take me hours and hours to learn it or whatever. But uh, it should be a good time trying to take out the final boss. And if we have extra time, we'll just do some extra things. Okay? Tonight on the late stream, it is Riven Remake. I keep calling it Remastered, but I actually think it's a remake because they're actually remade the game in full 3D. Uh, from what I'm to understand, we're right at the cusp of a brand new exciting part of the game. Because there's going to be... Um, like, something that's going to happen in the plot that's going to make it be longer than it looks. Like, right now, I'm almost done with everything that's been in the game. There's a few puzzles I didn't solve, but most of them I did. So, apparently, something's going to happen in the plot that's going to extend the length of the game tonight. I don't know what it is because I haven't spoiled myself, but I'm excited to see what it'll be tonight. I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, you know, uh, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. Time for more fun Riven remake, okay? I'm off from streaming tomorrow, but when I return on Thursday, it is... More Street Fighter 6 with Bison on the Victrix joystick, which, by the way, the Victrix joystick so far, two huge thumbs up. I love it. I love the feel of the stick. I love that it's cold aluminum. It doesn't really get dirty. It's responding fine. I like the features. It seems to be an amazing joystick. I'm really enjoying it. Thank you so much to the person who donated it, uh, and I'm looking forward to many more sessions with it, okay? So Street Fighter 6 on the day stream on Thursday, and then Thursday night, more Stardew Valley. Friday, we're going to try a new game, this Kunimitsu Gami uh, Path of the Goddess. It comes out on Game Pass on Friday, and I figure, why not give it a shot just to see what it is? If we don't like it, we don't have to keep playing it. But I'm interested to seeing what exactly the game is supposed to be. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of like that. They're like, we have no clue what this game is. We want to see people play it, try to figure out what it is, right? So, uh, yeah, let's explore with that game on Friday, see if it's any good. Friday night will be Friday Night Fights. Saturday is the return of Fallout 4, where we'll go back to the uh, uh, Nuka-Cola DLC. And then Saturday night will be likely the conclusion of Riven Remake. Sunday is React Day, okay? And then next week, what we're going to have to do is figure out if we want to continue on with this Kunitsugami game, um, or do we not like it, and do we want to play something different? And that'll help determine what will the schedule be moving forward for the end of July into August. Okay? Sound good? All right, cool. Okay, so that's the schedule for the week, guys. Now, other things coming up. Uh, as you know, the Digital Summer Party is coming on... Hold on. On Saturday, July 27th. It's an all-day marathon event here on DSP Gaming. There'll be food. There'll be fun. There'll be games. There's probably going to be a tier maker. It's going to be an all-around fun event. <clears throat> I'm excited for it. I hope that you guys will join me. Mark your calendars. I haven't had one of these in a couple of months, so it's always good to have a nice little marathon uh, during the show, during the, uh, to break up kind of the, everything going on. So that's coming up. Keep in mind, in the month of August, there's going to be multiple React events that I'm going to be doing over on my React channel, DSP Reacts, including I'm going to be reacting to the documentary coming up about Review Tech USA by June the King. And then later on, I'm going to be doing the, the reacting to my own documentary from June the King. So should be interesting, okay, to say the least. I haven't done the long-form React stuff in a very long time. So to go back to it and bring it back into the mix for variety, that should be pretty fun. Um, And over on the DSP Throwback channel, all right, FYI, if you're not aware, this just happened. Dante's Inferno just premiered not even two hours ago. The first part of Dante's Inferno playthrough part one, an hour-long part, just went live on DSP Throwback. So if you were interested in seeing that playthrough, which has been banned from the internet, I wish that was a joke. It's not. The playthrough originally was released in 2010. When I tried to put the playthrough on YouTube, YouTube removed it, citing community guidelines. Now, back in 2010, 
YouTube was a very different place. All the rules were very different. Today, you can put adult-oriented content on YouTube. It just has to be flagged as such. So, for example, this video is already flagged as adults because it has nudity and gore, so I can't monetize it. So, if you like that video, please consider supporting DSP Throwback in another way. Go watch a different video that actually is monetized. Leave a super thanks on a different video. Maybe leave a tip. You can find a, a tip in the description of that video. Because uh, I can't make anything on the video. YouTube demonetizes it for adult content. All right? But the good news is, <clears throat> for the first time ever, you're going to be able to see the first three plus chapters of Dante's Inferno on DSP Throwback. I think it's around seven to eight hours of gameplay. But then I was forced to basically stop playing it because YouTube wouldn't let me upload it anymore. Like, they were flagging every video and taking it down and saying, oh, you're violating our community guidelines. Stop uploading this game. Like, oh my God, what a stupid place YouTube was 13 years ago, right? Now, it's all allowed. Just, you know, don't monetize it, which I don't really care, right? So, um, yeah. And uh, please check it out. It'll be actually be alternating right now with LA Noir back and forth pretty much every day or every other day. Um, over on DSP Throwback. Now, when LA Noir finishes, we're looking for a new playthrough to do. And I think I'm starting to narrow it down. I think definitely Assassin's Creed 2 is definitely one of the considerations. And I would say one of the original three GTA games that I played in 2012 um, that were the PS2 originals, played on my HDTV, so they had a lot of input lagging problems. And also, um, they had music in them. And that's really the problem, is even though you could go watch those playthroughs right now, on this channel from 2012, half of those are muted or blocked. Why? Like, the entire parts are missing. And people are like, I don't understand. I'm watching the playthrough. Why are parts missing? Because of the licensed music. The licensed music essentially destroyed those playthroughs when YouTube changed in 2013. Before 2013, you could have licensed music in any video you wanted on YouTube, and it was never a problem. And then all of a sudden, in 2013, they launched this stupid content system, and it flags everyone's videos and ends up removing tons of them from YouTube, and a lot of my original GTA playthroughs were affected by that. So what we could do is pick one of the original GTA playthroughs and have it wipe the music. Now, I know that sucks because you guys like the music, but what can you do? It's that or it's blocked. So I'd rather take it with no music than blocked and unwatchable, right? So those playthroughs are epic. The original ones, a lot of people really, really enjoyed for having hilarious moments and the like. This would be a way for you to be able to watch them without interruption or muting or problems. You'd still hear the commentary. You just hear no music. It'd be more garbled. You'd hear some of it, but it would be garbled so YouTube's algorithm wouldn't catch it and mute it, okay? So maybe that, you know, so I'm, I'm debating. You know, what should be the next major playthrough for the throwback channel? I'm not sure. We're trying to figure that out. But please give me uh, your feedback on what you would like to see. I still need feedback. We figured out the other two things. Like we figured out, it's going to be Fallout 4, and we're going to try Kamitsugami, and if that doesn't work out, we'll do something else. So we know what we're doing on this channel for the next week. We kind of know what we're doing for the Digital Summer Party. We got our answers, but it's really this throwback stuff we haven't na nailed down yet. So I'm very interested in your feedback on what should be the next major playthrough so we could start work on that, okay? Let me know what you think. <clears throat> okay. Um. Cool. Uh, so I think we covered every topic I wanted to cover. I think it's now going to be time for some news. Okay, everyone, it is time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, and everyone's favorite segment. It's time for DSP News. Let's jump in. We have a few news stories to cover today. Um, let's see. First of all, it has 100% been confirmed. We were speculating yesterday, but now it has been confirmed that the Call of Duty Black Ops 6 beta will take place on August 30th for those who have early access or September 6th open beta, and it's all day one across all platforms. There's no longer, oh, this console gets it early, then the PC guys get it, then this console gets it. It's all simultaneous. This is one of the major changes Microsoft is making since they bought Activision Blizzard. There's no more exclusivity deal. Okay? Now, with this beta, if you have Game Pass Ultimate, you have access early. So I do. I have early access to this beta on August 30th. So yes, absolutely, I will be playing Call of Duty Black Ops 6 on August 30th to check it out. Primarily what I want to check out is if I play it at 1080p, but with VRR enabled at 120 hertz, will the game run at above 60 frames per second on my Xbox Series X? And if it does, how crazy will that look? 
will that benefit me competitively playing the game? It very well might. Having a higher frame rate in an FPS literally gives you an advantage. So I'm very curious how that will look. I've never seen a game 120 hertz or 120 frames before. So I'm interested to see how it will run and how it will affect things. So I will be checking that out on August 30th. In fact, I'm going to put that right now into my schedule. That's the same day as Star Wars Outlaws. So likely... I'll probably do like Star Wars Outlaws as the day stream. And then I'll probably do Call of Duty as the night stream that day. Good variety. That's going to be a heck of a day, huh? Cool. Okay. Now, we have been talking about recently that Microsoft is pushing getting Game Pass and being able to play games without a console. One of the things they've been advertising is if you have an Amazon Fire Stick for your TV, which is this little stick that plugs in via USB, and also you need HDMI plugged in, I think. I can't remember. It definitely uses USB, but I don't know. It has to have an HDMI because that's how it gets it as an input, correct? Yeah, it uses it as an input on your TV, I believe. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, you they, they're advertising now. You can play Xbox games cloud streamed onto your fire stick through your tv now that's interesting right you're saying you don't want us to buy your xbox console anymore what what strategy is this right are they not trying to sell consoles it's confusing why are you selling consoles then you're saying you don't need it just buy a fire stick and plug it into your tv now here's the thing i don't know how well it works because number one i'm going to be honest with you when I watch TV on my Fire Stick, it's not even that good. Like, it's the quality is good, but a lot of the times the menus lag. It has issues. There's this weird issue. Just listen to this, okay? So, my wife and I have been watching BattleBots, all right? We really like this show, and we've been watching it now for over a month, actually. We've been going through all the various seasons of the show. Every single time that we boot the Fire Stick and we go to watch BattleBots, it goes back to season four and this particular episode, and it auto-plays that episode. We don't know why. It just does. We're four seasons ahead. And it keeps going back to season four, this one particular episode, and just plays it nonstop. And this isn't the first time. When we open the YouTube app on the Fire Stick, it'll random play something that we didn't select. It thinks we did, or it thinks we remember that we want to watch it, but we don't. And it does this every app we open on there. It has this issue. So... The Fire Stick is not smooth. The menus can get really laggy and wonky. And that's just the Fire Stick running menus to play video. Now, can you imagine your Fire Stick trying to cloud stream a video game? This is not a sophisticated piece of technology. It's just a little thing running an app. It, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's like a thumb drive running an app. And they're acting like this thing's going to be able to stream a whole video game. I mean, hell, on the PlayStation 5, using PlayStation Plus Premium or Platinum or whatever it's called, you can stream PS3 games. And we tried that with Infamous 2, and it worked, but it was pixelized. Remember, it was very, like, not sharp at all, but it worked. It was a little delayed, but it definitely was playable. The way that they're, they're pushing this streaming capability is like, it's just going to work perfectly and beautifully out of the box. Buy a Fire Stick, buy a controller, plug it in, done. If you don't believe me, today they started selling a bundle on Amazon. It's the, an Xbox controller. Oh, mine's over there. An Xbox controller, a Fire Stick, a remote control to activate the Fire Stick, and a, a Game Pass Ultimate subscription for $78.99. So... It's a button there. Yeah, just out of the box, you'll just be able to play whatever you want. Go ahead. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't believe this. I just, sorry, I just don't believe this. I don't believe this is going to work like that. I think what's going to happen is people will buy it, plug it in, try to get it to work. It's going to lag. It's going to be fucking you know, dropping and shit. Because really, it depends on many factors. How good is your internet? I mean, let's also be honest. What about your TV? Is your TV even good enough? How old is your TV? 
right? Maybe the age of your TV could determine how well the Fire Stick's going to work with it. So they're selling this as a package as if it's just going to work, boom, instant. And I don't believe them. Now, I haven't tried it because my Fire Stick barely works as it is. <laughs> maybe what I would have to do is buy a new Fire Stick, the new version, and then maybe I could test it on my TV. The other thing is, how exactly does your controller work with this? Because the controller isn't working with the TV. The controller would be working with the Fire Stick. Where do you plug in a wireless adapter to your Fire Stick? I don't... The Fire Stick is a USB and an HDMI. That's it. That's the whole thing. So where are you plugging this in exactly? I, I don't know. People are saying there's Bluetooth connectivity. Really? So let me get this straight. Not only do you want this thing streaming a full quality 1080p video game over the internet through the cloud, you also want it to be wirelessly Bluetooth connecting to devices in your home. This Fire Stick. Not this PC, not this gaming console. This Fire Stick. <laughs> I'm, I mean, guys, I mean, listen, maybe, okay, hold on. Maybe I'm just a cynic, right? Maybe, maybe I really am. Um, let me see if I can find it. I haven't done this in a long time. Oh, maybe I don't have it anymore. Oh, maybe I don't have it anymore. Oh, here it is. Maybe I am just the old man yelling at the... Like, in this case, I am literally am an old man yelling at the cloud streaming. Right? Darn nation, these kids think they're going to stream their games without a console? Right? <laughs> but maybe I am that. But to me, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just very skeptical that this is going to work. Right? But it, what's weird about it is they're selling it. You buy it right now for $79. So, I guess they're under the impression it's ready to go. I guess we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, I don't know. I Right now, I don't have any desire to buy a new Fire Stick. Uh, but maybe I should upgrade my Fire Stick. I guess I'd have to see about syncing my Xbox controller to the fire stick i guess you have to use batteries then because right now both my controller here and my wife's downstairs we plug in directly with usb and you can't do that with the fire stick you'd have to do wireless um yeah i don't know i guess we'll have to figure it out but it just doesn't seem to me like it's gonna work but maybe it is I, I, it's just weird that they just started advertising this package and again what is what is microsoft's end game it's very confusing I thought they wanted to sell consoles. I guess not. I guess they they uh gave gave up on console war now. They're done with it, I guess. Are they done with the console wars? They're you know, we don't want to sell consoles anymore. Who cares about the Xbox? Maybe they, they're throwing in the towel. I don't know. Anyway. Um so it's official. This morning, Square Enix released the official order which you should play the Kingdom Hearts series. For those who always wanted to jump into Kingdom Hearts and you have no idea how to play the games because there's so many of them, are you ready for this? I'm about to read you the official listing. This is how you should play Kingdom Hearts. Ready? Okay. Part 1. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Part 2. Kingdom Hearts RE Chain of Memories. Number 3. Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. Number 4. Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, the HD cutscene compilation. Number five, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix. Number six, Kingdom Hearts Recoded HD cutscene compilation. Okay, we're not, that's not it. We're not done. Where are you going? Why are you getting out of your chair? Uh, no, we're not even halfway through yet. I still have to give you the second half of what you have to do to, to play Kingdom Hearts. Okay, number seven, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD. Number eight, Kingdom Hearts Cross Back Cover, which is just a movie. Yes, you have to watch that. If you miss that, you're missing critical pieces of lore. You must watch that eighth in order. Okay, number nine. So don't skip the don't don't skip the movie. Number nine, 
Kingdom Hearts 0 0.2 Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage. What is that? Don't ask me. I'm just reading the official guide. That's number nine, what you must watch. Okay? Number 10, Kingdom Hearts Union Cross views the story in the theater. <laughs> what? What? What is that? What does that even mean? Kingdom Hearts Union X or Union Cross Dark Road view the story in the theater. What? I mean, it's gotten so bad, I don't even understand what they're saying. Like, how would you even, what is that? How would you even access that? What are they talking about? All right, let's continue. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is number 11. So it's, so you go one, something else, two, 10 other things, 11. Yes, you have to do eight other things before you can play Kingdom Hearts 3, apparently. That's what they're saying. So Kingdom Hearts 3, then... Kingdom Hearts 3 plus the Remind DLC. And then lastly, the last piece of Kingdom Hearts for now, part 13, Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Dark Road. Not the view, not the story in the theater, the actual game, whatever that is, which I've never heard of. So yes, I'm not kidding you. You have to do 13 things in a specific order to make any sense of the plot of Kingdom Hearts. That's they, they thought that was a good idea. That was a good choice for consumers and gamers. Right. So, I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Why, why when I played Kingdom Hearts 3, I literally had no idea what 90% of the plot meant. Because literally, according to this, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 things I should have played or watched or both between Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3 to understand the plot of 3. That is the worst story in gaming. Can I just officially say that now? That is actually, like, undoubtedly, the absolute worst narrative ever in gaming. That is the worst way to distribute a story. That is the most joke of a way to present any kind of anything enjoyable. They are morons. I don't care if, it's, if it actually is the best story ever. If you do that in that order, it's still the worst story because they're a bunch of fucking idiots who don't know how to deliver a narrative. That is stupid as shit. Okay. So let's delete all that shit off my phone. We got one more story for today. <laughs> okay. The last story for today is that we finally have an update from The Witcher 4. That's right. CD Projekt Red has said they're working on many projects. There's actually a new a Witcher, original Witcher remake they're working on. They're actually working on the sequel to Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk 2. However... Out of all of their projects that they're working on right now, The Witcher 4 is the, in the most advanced state of development. Meaning, yeah, guess what? Uh, Witcher 4 will be the very first game that they pump out next. You're not going to see anything else out of CG Project Red until Witcher 4. Now, for me, this is good and bad. And here's why I say that. It's good because Witcher 3 was outstanding. I think we can all agree that, right? I think there were some things about the game that weren't as good as other people said. Like, I actually still feel the combat of Witcher 3 was actually not that good. But the story elements, the world building, the graphics, the insane amount of questing that was all meaningful, the side content, it all blew, away, blew you away. At the time, it was so good that almost every other studio making an RPG decided to change their whole, like, methodology and try to copy Witcher 3. I mean, Assassin's Creed changed from being a stealth franchise into an open-world RPG like Witcher 3 for three whole games, right? Now, the double-edged sword here, all right, is that a lot has changed since the release of Witcher 3, correct? I wonder how good Witcher 4 is going to be. When we just saw what happened with Cyberpunk, releasing completely broken it took so many years for them to even update the game to be what they had promised for me personally i still don't like it but that's my own personal take that's subjective a lot of people like cyberpunk now since the release of phantom liberty right um i'm nervous that this game will come out and will not be so good at launch and it'll be another situation where they'll fix it or they'll add content to make it better but 
I, I really hope they have learned their lesson from Cyberpunk, right? Like, they know that the games that they put out are going to have giant expectations. And especially after the Cyberpunk debacle, all eyes will be on them, <clears throat> correct? All eyes will be staring directly at them saying, this better be good because you really screwed up last time around with, with uh, Cyberpunk. So I really, really hope it's going to be good. The other problem is, I'd say, culture has changed. Witcher 3 came out a very long time ago, almost a decade ago. And in that last decade, we've seen a lot of things change in, in culture in general, in gaming. Um, are they going to deem it too risque to be doing certain things now in the plot that they used to be okay with? You know what I'm saying? Without saying it outright, do you know what I'm saying? Like, Witcher, all the Witcher games always had these kind of risque plots and things. And now, with Witcher 4, is it going to be totally different, right? So, I don't know. I, I, it makes me a little nervous that the game will not live up to the expectations that it built nine years ago with Witcher 3. But hopefully it will be good. Hopefully the game comes out, it's not broken, has tons of content, it works fine. It's got good plots still. They haven't ruined it. You know what I mean? And I'll be honest, I also hope that they do have uh, good elements of co combat this time. I honestly think that the last Witcher game's weak point was its combat. It should have been a lot better. For what it was, it was way more simplistic and just silly with, oh, here's a bunch of fucking cocktails and potions and brews and shit. Like, fuck this. Just make the f combat fun. You know, and it just didn't feel that fun to me. Everything else about the game was great. The combat just felt like meh. So if they improve that and they they make it fully functional, it has the amount of content and story as the as of three. Then I think it's going to be fine. But I, I guess we'll have to we'll have to see when the game comes out. Of course, we have no release date information or anything. It's very preliminary. But they're basically saying that's the game that's most advanced in their development cycle. Okay. All right. That today is the news. I hope that you guys are excited for that and enjoyed it. All right. So, folks, what we'll do now is a few shout-outs. We'll have the show go to a little bit of Q&A, and we'll go from there. So, shout-outs-wise, we actually start off today with Iron Chef Sakai, who themselves became a super supporter of the channel and then gifted five memberships. But my screen is only saying four got gifted. It's saying Andy, Crema de Coco, Carlos, and Zhang got gifted memberships. So, congrats. I don't know if the fifth one ever went out. My screen doesn't say that, but it was an hour ago, so there's no way for me to check on it. Uh, hopefully, the fifth one did go out. As I've been explaining to you guys, there have been many issues on YouTube in the last week. The, the revenue wasn't being counted properly. Gifted memberships weren't going out properly. Some people were saying they were getting errors when they were trying to super chat. So there's been bugs and issues on YouTube all week long. If you gift memberships, they may go out right away. They may take a while. It doesn't seem like there's anything that determines that. It just messes up by itself. Um, so it is what it is, I guess. Um, you know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Someone in chat says, did I see the Street Fighter 6 news awesome right? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Did it? Is there news that just hit? Street Fighter 6 news? Uh... Uh, <laughs> I have to look. I don't see anything right now. Well, don't really see it. I don't see any news about Street Fighter 6. So. They're removing Cammy entirely. Good stuff. <laughs> okay. Anyway. No, I didn't hear about any Street Fighter 6 news. Okay. Um, First tip of the day. 
Is a dollar fifty tip? Okay, so let's see. This is completely false, but I'll read it anyway. What are your long term plans for Street Fighter content? I feel like it's gotten stale. Every stream is the same thing. You're clearly unhappy with the game. When's the point that you'll say enough is enough and the game gets dropped? I think it would make you a lot happier and help your mental capacity. Okay. So obviously, number one, you, you don't understand fighting games. I'm just going to be honest with you. Because you should see what it used to be like back in the day in the competitive fighting game community. It, what, it, this, with fighting games, all right, it's always a love-hate relationship. You understand? Like, I love fighting games. They've been a part of my life since the early 1990s, correct? I mean, I've been going to arcades playing them then i started traveling to, to to participate in tournaments and the like um and then you know i started covering them for youtube right and then for the long time i really didn't cover them that well but now for the last year i've had very heavy coverage of street fighter 6 correct we can all agree here um <clears throat> now in regards to street fighter 6 yes you're absolutely right this game causes me to rage a lot, but it's for good reason. It's because I actually have passion for fighting games. If I didn't care about fighting games, I probably wouldn't care about the game. I'd be like, ah, eh, fuck it, I lost, who cares? But when I lose because my inputs drop, which is unacceptable for a competitive game, when I lose because someone can literally learn an easy mode pattern and just guess random inputs five times in a row and hit you each time on a guess, that shit drives me nuts because that's not what the essence and core of fighting games ever was meant to be. And what it means is that the people who are in charge of modern fighting games are fucking idiots who don't understand what's competitive in a fighting game. Guessing five times in a row is not competitive in a fighting game. That's the equivalent of gambling in a casino, guessing something and or rolling dice or doubling down on a fucking hand in blackjack or, oh man, put it all on the river, right? Like, that's not Street Fighter. This is supposed to be a competition, not a gambling match, you see? And that's what drives me nuts. Those are the two things that are pissing me off right now. Netcode dropping inputs and the gambling that's in the game. Those two things, in my opinion, ruin this game online and make it not a fully enjoyable experience. Okay? However, what you have to understand is that fighting games have always been like this, just at different levels of capacity. Back in the day, when I used to play arcade games, it was the same thing. You'd yell at the controls when the fucking joystick or the buttons on the arcade machine weren't working very well, which happened all the time, by the way, because what you don't understand is, you know, right now you play a fighting game. It's like, oh, it's my own joystick, right? You're the only one using it. Back then, you go to an arcade, you don't know how many fucking people played on that cabinet. You don't know who smashed it or got pissed off and was mashing the buttons and broke it. And, and now you're using something that's faulty. And now you put your money into play and the thing doesn't even work. That it was a common thing where you would have malfunctions and things on arcade cabinets. So controls were always a factor back in the day for competitive fighting games. They really were. Today, it's the online component. Back then, it was the actual physical hardware of the arcade. Of course, every Street Fighter was different. Every Street Fighter had something broken or annoying that people didn't like. Hell, in Street Fighter 3, the entire first two iterations of the game had broken characters with infinite combos. And you just had to deal with it because guess what? They didn't patch games back then. So every character, everyone had to deal with Ibuki and broken Akuma and shit like that. And there's nothing you can do about it. You just sit there and you bitch about it all day, but then you got to find a way to kind of deal with it or just lose to it a lot, which is pretty much what happened. Look at tournament results. Those characters dominated because they were broken, right? This has always been the way with fighting games. The thing is, what you've seen is you see a new generation of kids who come out. Jasper, you're not going to bite that wire. He's starting again. It's been an hour. Now he's going to start biting a wire again. What you're seeing is a new generation of children, okay, who've come out with a different mentality of what fighting games are. They don't even understand where fighting games came from. They haven't played the classics. They haven't learned the history. They started playing Street Fighter with, like, Street Fighter V. So to them, these issues, oh, drop inputs. Who cares? Just, just do the, the flowchart again, right? Who cares if the flowchart dropped? Just do it again. It's safe, right? Oh, you guessed wrong. Oh, big deal. I'll guess right the next match and I'll win. That's their mentality. They don't get that fighting games used to be something better. 
they don't even understand what it means when you explain to them these fundamentals of what's neutral, right? What's a zoning game? What's that? Never heard of it, right? They don't know. They really don't. They wouldn't even understand. I explain to you what those things are. They can't, <clears throat> okay? So that's what pisses me off about modern Street Fighter. But in previous Street Fighter, it was the same. It was, there was always something that pissed you off about a fighting game, always. And, it, you know, the difference was, back then, you would just play with your friends at the arcade, and you rant and rage at the game, and you yell when you lose, and you go home and no one cares. Today, I'm honest about this stuff on the internet. I'm one of the few people who is honest about it on the internet, because I have no stake in it, right? Back in the day, this was a common thing that happened all the time at arcades, at tournaments. Everyone bitched about fighting games and how imperfect they were, and how they wished that they were better. Today, everyone just kisses fighting games ass because that gets more views, that gets more sponsorships, that gets more money, more fucking team signings and fucking bonus pay for joysticks you kissed. And, you know what I'm saying? If you're overly positive about fighting games, you'll get commentary jobs and you'll get this thing and that thing. If you're honest about fighting games, you get nothing and no one cares. Guess what? I'm not going to get all that shit anyway. So I'm going to sit here and be honest about fighting games. I am. I'm not going to lie about fighting games and tell you that they're perfect. They're not. They have flaws, and these flaws should be called out, and these flaws should be criticized, you know, fairly, not over the top being unfair. I'm not here to tell you that Street Fighter Six is an awful game. It's definitely not. In fact, Street Fighter Six is so much better than Five. That's kind of why, even though there's things about Six I don't like, I'm just so happy it, it improved from Five. That I had to, you know, remember five, I had to skip fucking Street Fighter for seven years because it was so bad. So to me, I'm just happy to have something better that I can still enjoy, even if it's not exactly how I would like it. It has factors in it I really don't like. I still enjoy the game. Right? Now, in regards to me playing it and getting frustrated and saying I don't enjoy it, you're wrong. If I wasn't enjoying Street Fighter, I wouldn't be playing it. Seriously, why would I keep playing it? I do other shit. Guys, there's a million games I could be playing right now. There's so many games that I've skipped or didn't have opportunity to play or whatever, and it's summertime now, and there's not a lot of new releases. I could easily be playing them now, but I really like Street Fighter Six. That's why I want to keep playing it and get better. Look, Bison is my best character. He is. I'm doing better with Bison than I did with any other character. I got the most ranking points. I'm getting the most wins in Master Rank. I'm getting better. I am. I'm improving my game. Every time I play, there's a new improvement. There's something better I'm doing, right? So why on earth would I be like, eh, I don't like this game. I'm going to stop playing it now. Huh? Now, I'm still going to be honest about the things that frustrate me when I play, but that's not the entire time I'm playing, right? What it is is, I hate to say it, people like you, the person who typed the dollar fifty, you only focus on the negative. You literally ignore all the positive. All the time I'm having a good time with the game, the good matches that I'm having right? The fact that I, I win more than I lose. I've got ranking points going up. Oh, ignore all that because Phil complained a few times when he was playing. No. How about you actually stop being a negative asshole? You stop watching negative montages of me on detractor channels, and instead you actually watch my content. Because if you were actually there for the stream, you would see that I am enjoying myself, and that's why I continue to play. It's, it's definitely rough at times, but I'm having a good time with it. But Stop trying to formulate a narrative based around toxicity, based around idiocy to, to tell a story that's not true so that someone can make detractor content and make money. Because all you're doing is you're, you're showing how dumb you are. I'm sorry, you are. You're showing how stupid you are to buy into that bullshit. Uh, it helped. I, I bet you would just tell me, oh, I suck at the game too, so why bother playing it, right? I don't suck at the game. I have six characters at fucking Master. I have Bison, who I'm doing really well with and hanging with people way above my level. I don't... Uh, let me put it in perspective here, folks. All right? I have six characters in Street Fighter Six at Master. All right? I am consistently, consistently able to beat people at Master level, even in casual and at rank. Okay? Folks, I haven't played a game, a fighting game, offline in over a decade. Should I repeat that so that people can uh, can understand? I have not played a single person in a fighting game off of the internet in over 10 years. And I'm hanging with these people who probably play these fucking games all the time as a hobby. 
These people who sit there with their friends and they lab it out and they have practice sessions and they go to tournaments and shit. I'm the same level as them. And I haven't played a game offline in 10 years. So it doesn't matter how you want to try to spin shit. I'm pretty good at Street Fighter 6, okay? I'm not tournament level. I'm not going to go to any tournament and win. But I'm pretty damn good at Street Fighter 6, all right? So I don't want to hear this bullshit that I don't like the game and obviously it frustrates me. What's my, my goal? Here's my goal. I will play Street Fighter 6. I will get better at it. I will like it. And you will stop watching detractor content and spouting out that bullshit on my stream because you're an idiot. That's, that's my goal. Okay? Thanks. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So what is going on today, guys? What's up, Game Boy? Good morning. How you doing? Okay. By the way, I, I should say this too. The amount of time that I spent playing Street Fighter VI is not even a fraction of the time I used to spend playing fighting games back in the day. It's not. Because I used to actively be traveling, playing in tournaments. Every single weekend, I'd spend entire sessions at arcades, whether at my local mall or my actual local arcade in my neighborhood. And then I'd be traveling to, New to, to Chinatown to play people in New York City, traveling to eat on the break in Dunlin, New Jersey to play people there. During the summertime, traveling all over the place to play at various tournaments. Like, this was just how it was. That was the lifestyle. Is your hobby with Street Fighter was all you did when you weren't either working or in school, it was Street Fighter time, right? Today, I'm balancing Street Fighter with so many other things that I'm not even putting in like half the time that I used to playing Street Fighter. And I'm still that good. So can you imagine if I actually was like the people who I'm playing online, putting in two, three times as much time, playing offline, traveling, I probably then would be winning tournaments. But I don't have the time, dedication, or desire to do that. I don't care about going to Evo and placing. I don't care about going to a local in Seattle and placing. It all means nothing. It's all frivolous nonsense, you understand? It really is. <laughs> However, I have one little space where I can vent about how I feel about the state of fighting games, and I can tell you what I think should be better, and that's my streams where I play Street Fighter Six. And you're going to continue to get that honesty from me when I play it. And if you don't like that, don't attend the streams and stop watching detractor content that puts it out of context because you're a fucking idiot for watching it. <clears throat> no, I've never been to Japan. All right. We got a little bit of extra time. Not too much, but we have a little bit of extra time. So let's open up the chat to a little bit of Q&A. All right. And, uh, and go from there. Do I like Street Fighter Six Bison more than his older iterations? Yeah, he's pretty darn good. Um, he he reminds me of a couple different versions. He reminds me of actually the version of all games. Uh, there was um, SNK. There was the SNK crossover, SVC Chaos. He actually reminds me of Bison from SVC Chaos a bit, which is weird. It was the SNK version of Bison. And he played weird, like this version kind of plays a little bit like that with some of the stuff that he's able to do. Um, I wonder if they took some inspiration from that version of Bison. He seems like a hybrid. He's definitely way different from Street Fighter V Bison, right? Didn't Street Fighter V Bison have all the fucking psycho power waves and shit? And this version doesn't have that. Um, I think I like him better than Street Fighter IV Bison. I didn't really like Street Fighter IV Bison. That was actually a character that Min, remember Min from back in the day? He really liked Street Fighter IV Bison. That was his main. I didn't like him. I think I like this version better. Um, but obviously, you know, my favorite version is going to be Super Turbo Bison, who has all these combos, tricks, ticks, throws, you know. I, Super Turbo Bison, I mean, again, Super Turbo versions of characters are kind of like almost the epitome. They're the balance of style, but also like classic gameplay, you know. What Street Fighter cabinets did I play in Chinatown? Oh, all, all the big four games. So any any versus games, you know, that were out at the time, X-Men versus Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2, 
uh, Street Fighter Three Third Strike, uh, more, uh, Super Turbo, and uh, Capcom vs. SK2. Those were the big four that everyone played from like 1999, 2000, all the way through 2009 when Street Fighter Four came out. Those are the only games that were out. Like Capcom didn't put out anymore, so we just all played those games nonstop. If we don't finish Elden Ring today, when will we see it again? We'll do it again on Saturday. We'll bump Fallout. We're in no rush to bring Fallout back, to make it clear. Fallout is what we're going to do when we finish these things. So once the Elden Ring DLC is done, that's when Fallout comes back. Will I be using Torrent in the Elden Ring boss fight today? You cannot use Torrent in the final Elden Ring boss fight today. You misunderstood. You, apparently, you can use Torrent in the final boss of the base game now. You know, the giant Elden Beast thing? Then you can use Torrent. You cannot use Torrent in the fight against the final DLC boss. You've never been to New York City. Is it worth visiting? You're asking someone who hasn't been to New York City since 2010 if it's worth going. Listen, New York City, as they call it, it's the melting pot. If you go to New York City... You could get pretty much anything you want. You could get food from all different cultures. You could take in a Broadway show. You could see a concert. You could see a, a movie in a, in a giant IMAX theater. You could see a sports game in a huge arena, right? Um, you could do crazy amounts of different kinds of shopping. Any kind of shopping you can think of, you could do in New York City. Um, you could see landmarks and sites, historical spots, right? There's so much to do in New York City. But just like everything... There's stresses, there's problems, there's a ton of crime, there's uh, a ton of pollution, there's a lot of fucking people there at all times crammed in in small spaces. Um, so you got to take everything, you know, for what it is in balance, right? I've been to New York City and really enjoyed myself. I've been to New York City and just had an incredibly stressful day, depending on the day and what I was doing that day and stuff like that. So... It's your call. I, just like anything, if you plan it out, you'll probably have a great time. Like, if you planned out, okay, here's my agenda in New York. This day, I'm going to do this and this and this. I'm going to do these things in between that are actually really neat. Like, what if you want to do a day where you do Times Square, but you plan that you go to that famous deli at Times Square. You're going to eat there. You're going to take in all the sites of Times Square. Maybe you're going to see a show right around the corner, right? Have a few drinks. Then you go, you know, if you plan it out, it'll probably work out fine. But that's the thing. You need to be planning. You need to be being careful. You can't just go there with the expectation that things are going to fall in your lap and be good. <laughs> That's what people prey on. Haha, <laughs> the tourist is coming. The dumb tourist who knows nothing will come and I'll tell them all lies and rob them and do all kinds of fucked up stuff. That's, That's literally, there are people waiting there for you to do that. Okay? So if you go with a plan, you do it right, you'll probably have a really great time. It really depends also on what kind of stuff you're looking to do. Because obviously you're going to find it better for certain things and, and not as good for others, right? Like, if you go to New York City... And you're looking for good Asian, Chinese-style food, Italian food, you know, delis. Jewish delis are super good in New York City, like some of the best in the country. Street food, stuff like that. Perfect. If you're going there for, like, certain kinds of cuisine that aren't there, you're going to be pissed off, you know? Don't go to New York City to eat a burger. Why are you... You get a burger anywhere, right? <laughs> When I ever do a playthrough of Tales of Vesperia, Tales of Vesperia was an RPG that I played during the year of 2007 when I was trying to get back into console. It was either 2007 or 2008. It was one of those years. I was trying to get back into console games because at the time, I had been a competitive Street Fighter player, but then I injured my back. That's when I had my first diagnosis of my severely herniated disc in my lower back at the time. So I knew I wasn't going to be able to travel anymore. And because of that, I needed to find something else to do with my time. And I was like, dude, I've been ignoring, like, console video games for, like, the longest time when I was traveling to play Street Fighter. And so I, I just, on a whim, wanted to try this Tales of Vesperia game. And I freaking loved it. I just, I loved the music. I loved the graphics. Because it was anime style, but it was actually a nice visual style. The combat was super fun. To be doing a giant combo with one character, tag in the next. They continue the combo, tag in the next. They finish the combo with a giant triple team or whatever it was. It had tons of content, uh, so lots of side content and exploration. The story was good. The voice acting I enjoyed. I just, everything about it was like a joy to me because I hadn't played RPGs or anything in such a long time. 
And I was like, wow, this is what JRPGs are now? You know, I grew up in the era of the classic Final Fantasies and to, all the way to Final Fantasy VII. And then I played like Sweek It In and stuff like that. I hadn't played a modern RPG in almost a decade. And I played it, I was like, oh my God, this game is so good, you know? Now, would I play it today? I don't know. I don't know if my audience would like it. It's already a very outdated game. Um, and quite frankly, people might just find it too repetitive, too boring for today. Maybe for the time it was great, you know, 15, 16, shit, 17 years ago. Damn. But, uh, no, not 17 years ago. What am I talking about? Wait, it was 17 years ago? Oh, my God, it really was. Holy shit. 17 years ago. Tales of Vesperia. So, I don't know. I don't know if people would actually like me to play that. I mean, I'm, I'm always open-minded. I always say one day I'm going to play Lost Odyssey, right? I always say that. But at this point, I don't know if it'll ever happen. <laughs> Did I play GTA Online? Yes. First, I tried to play it when it first launched, and it didn't work for a whole week. Then when they got it working, I tried it, and I was incredibly disappointed because I was ex expecting it to be like Red Dead Redemption 1 Online, kind of like with their Suicide Kings and stuff that I was able to do. And none of that was present in GTA Online. They had so severely limited what you could do with the online that I didn't like it. I went back when they actually released heists, and admittedly, I thought the heists were okay. It was kind of fun, but it was too short-lived. Once you beat the heist, there's, I was like bored. There's nothing to do. So I, that was it. That was my last experience with GTA Online was when the heist released. I played it at launch, and that was it. I never touched it again. What about Tales of Arise? Well, actually, my wife tried to play that when it was on Game Pass. She didn't really like it. I was watching her play it. I was like, yeah, it's definitely a very repetitive JRPG-style game. You know, you have to be used to that style of game. She didn't really like it. Uh, would I play it? Nah. I mean, it wasn't that It wasn't that big of a deal when it came out, you know. Well, I, just, I'm, I hate to say it. I just feel like lengthy JRPGs at this point aren't really working. Like, if I do a classic throwback, JRPG, that's one thing because that's something from my past and it's something that I can add a lot of context and, and passion for. But a new one, they're just not doing well. I mean, if Final Fantasy VII Rebirth flopped on this channel when it was a new release, what makes you think Tales of Arise is going to get views, right? And that's something that I can't control. I have passion for JRPGs. I enjoy them. Sadly, that doesn't really translate over to the audience and there's not much I can do about that. Uh, Andrew, no, I don't think I'm playing Wise 10 coming in September. I didn't even know it was coming out. That's not on my radar. OMG, why do you always ask me so intrusively about things I'm doing on my day off? No, I, for the record, no, I'm not getting a haircut tomorrow. But why do you, like, all the time ask me if I'm getting a haircut? Like, what is the point? Of asking me that question. Like, if I get one, you'll know the next day. Will you not? Like. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I definitely want to play Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster. And, of course, Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster. Five was great, right? When we played it, what was it, two years ago? One year ago? I can't even remember. It was really good. So I'm very interested in playing the other ones that I bought in the collection. You know, we just got to find a time for it right now. I don't think it would be the time. <clears throat> Am I interested in game audio? Sadly, it, it, it's kind of hard for me to be interested in game audio because I can't really enjoy it. You know, what the setup I have, almost all my games that I play are going through a Dolby Digital interface, which isn't real surround sound or anything like that. I can't do... The true audio out of any console besides my xbox because then i can't have audio go on the stream like for example right now on playstation 5 i have no capability to do true surround sound i don't because if you do audio out of ps5 like if i take my ps5 controller i plug my headphones in you guys have no audio mutes it they have not done dual audio out on ps5 this console gen for no reason they just did away with it and it's very anti-consumer but apparently nobody cares but me so yeah um, the only console that I actually take advantage of true full audio fidelity on is my Xbox. 
I get better audio quality on there because there you can do dual audio out. So I actually get the good surround sound from the controller. Plus you guys get the audio on the stream. <clears throat> um, so there you go. Ugh. All right. So guys, anyway, we're about, in a few minutes here. We're going to start with the Elden Ring DLC. Please support the stream today. Thank you, Iron Chef Sakai, for supporting it early with the memberships. We got one tip so far. Please support the stream today. 50 buck goal, as you know. If we hit that, that would be great. All right? It would be great to get it over with early so I can just focus on the boss and I have to sit here and say, oh, great, we're going to have another slow stream. I don't know what it's been recently. Maybe it's just because these games I've been playing have been playing for so long, right? Maybe that's what it is. I've been playing Street Fighter Six for a year. I've been playing Elden Ring now for two and a half weeks. But if you can support the stream today, it would be great if we get if we get hit the goal early then i really don't have to even worry about shit and i can just focus on this fucking boss which is going to be a pain in the ass regardless okay so if you're thinking of supporting today please do by the way today the last day for the damas helmet since this is going to likely be the conclusion of elden ring and i'm not playing uh, a from soft game for a while the conclusion and the end of dumas today Say goodbye to Dumas. It would be great to be wearing this when I beat the final boss. Okay? Cool. <clears throat> All right. Cosmos, I have no desire to talk about Digimon World 1. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> people, people ask me those random questions. What does everyone think about Digimon World 1? When have I ever mentioned Digimon ever in my content? When have I ever said I've ever played it? What the hell is Digimon World? Why are you asking me that on my stream? Like, what? <laughs> Why not ask me about my favorite flavor of Greek yogurt? Because we talk about that all the time, too, right? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? The weird shit. Ghost of Tsushima? Oh, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima is an outstanding game. Um, If you're wondering why we haven't heard any updates about the sequel to Ghost of Tsushima... It is fully in development, but remember that that studio is very small. Sucker Punch. They're very small. They don't have ginormous resources like other studios, so they're literally just working on the sequel right now, and so we won't hear anything from them till they're ready to deliver something, but what's great about it is we know they're a great studio. We know they don't rush games out. Ghost of Tsushima was outstanding when it came out. Can you imagine now? A brand new Ghost of Tsushima running on PS5, or you know, with the amazing better graphics and everything. Like it's gonna be sick. So I'm in no rush. I'm in no worry about it at all. Like literally, I'm, I know it's gonna be good when it comes out. Let them let them develop it. Let them cook it, as they say. Let them work on it. Make it good. And uh, no rush for the sequel. But I'm excited for it for sure. Well. You know what they say, asking you shall receive. Iron Chef Sakai just tipped me $49 and says, all right, let's have just a chill stream now. Perfect. Thank you, Iron Chef Sakai. You know what? I'm going to give you the $50 animation, even though it was $49. Because <laughs> I want you to see me in this diaper so bad. Thank you, Iron Chef Sakai, for a $49 tip. And that means it is the Tier 1 tip skull. It is Gunner Glasses. Very good. So now, any other support greatly appreciated today. But at the very least, we already hit the, t the tip skull I was looking for. Your Blood Knight did a super judges. Will you do Radon Melee only, I hope? What does that mean? Will I do Radon Melee only? Uh, I'm not using a magic build. If that's what you mean, I'm not using a magic build at all. I haven't used magic since the very beginning of the Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC, I felt like it was underpowered, so I swapped, and I've been using all melee builds the entire time, actually. That's a weird question, because I feel like you haven't watched the, the playthrough at all. Right? <laughs> Jasper Boy. <laughs> Are you going to be a good boy today, Jasper? Are you going to not chew these wires, please? You'll be good and just relax in here with me until Cat gets home. I hope so. 
Ugh, he's been all over the place. Theodore says, last week I got Resident Evil 8 on a discount. So far, I like it. I think Resident Evil 8 is great. Resident Evil 8 is a super good game. Um, you know, it has, what I liked is that at different points of the game, it feels almost different, like a different game. First, you start off in a town. Then you're in a castle. Then you're back in the town. Then there's like a haunted house, right? There's like, I like that the different points of the game feel like completely different games. Yeah, they're all like horror tropes. and They all kind of like mash together into this nice combination. I really like that. Okay. Oh, okay. I think it's time for us to, to end the show, guys. <laughs> replay Resident Evil. What do you mean? Replay what Resident Evil? Play Resident Evil 6? Yeah, that's what I only played once ever. Remember, I did a full co-op playthrough on launch day. But then, people were very upset. They didn't like the game. I thought it was good, just not a good Resident Evil. But I thought it was a great game. Just, you know, it did kind of put Resident Evil in a different direction as an action game. But as an action game, I thought it was fucking outstanding. It was so great as an action game. But not people didn't want an action game. They wanted Resident Evil. So I understand why they were upset. Am I liking the lore more now in Shadow of the Erd Tree? I mean, we don't we didn't get our final answers yet, right? I guess what people are saying is once you beat the final boss, you get the final lore, and then the whole DLC makes sense. So I guess we need to beat the boss, and then I'll I'll answer the question. Right now, I think my, my guesses have been pretty darn close to what it really is, I think, you know. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. It is time to end the show. Great chill podcast this morning. Lots of topics discussed. Remember, I'm off tomorrow, but when I return on Thursday, of course, I'll tell you about Bill's day off and any game news that has happened. I'll tell you how the stream went with uh, Elden Ring today. I'm sure I'll tell you about progress in uh, Riven. And anything else going on. All right, guys? All right. Thank you so very much. Great show. I'll see you Thursday.